greetings and welcome to STL Soccer Talk, the video edition. I'm Tom Timmerman of the St. Louis Post-Dispatch. This is Carter Chapley's farewell cake, but Carter, as you may know, is not here. Instead, I am joined today and going forward, going forward. by Beth O'Malley of the Post-Dispatch. Beth, hello. Hello. It's great to be here. I'm usually sitting uh, just behind us oh, yes, at my right desk. There. Yeah. So it's very different to be on this side uh, of the plexiglass screen behind us <laughs> and on this side of the camera. So I'm going to look really awkward for a while. <laughs> you can't be more self-conscious than I am. Um, yeah, you say Beth has probably actually already been on this video before, just right. sitting back at her desk yeah. doing things. But anyway, let's talk, let's talk soccer. That's why um, we're here? That's, that's the name of the show. Um, City, a tie that they kind of, they felt good about how they played, but wish they'd gotten a better result. But in retrospect, looking back, they, well, they, they played, you know, they feel they played well. Yeah, and, and from a fan's perspective, which is where I come from more than a reporting perspective, it felt like a long game. Berkey didn't have too many saves that he had to make. Mm -hmm. Those are always fun to watch. There were a lot of attempts on goal with the frustration of watching players miss the ball with their heads by about six inches mm -hmm. or missing the goal mm -hmm. itself by a couple of feet. So it, it was a frustrating game to watch in a lot of ways. But as you said, th they came out with a tie not quite as bad as a total loss, but also not as fun <laughs> as a win. They could have won it. They still are in first place in the Western Conference, which is exceptional uh, for an expansion team. And they went 3-0-1 right. in their four games of home games in a row. And it's funny, we should say that they still have a four-game unbeaten streak because by league rules, the Dallas game is considered to have existed on the date that it began on May the 6th. So even though they lost there in the middle, mm -hmm. it doesn't end their what is now an un unbeaten streak. I think the players and the fans would rather see that game fade <laughs> into the past mm -hmm. and let's all move on. I, it was a great home stand that they had. They go on the road now over to Nashville and that will be a rough game. It'll be a challenge. Nashville, one of the best teams in the league uh, so far this season. Um, no one is probably going to catch Cincinnati this season, but Nashville playing extremely well with uh, local uh, Joe Willis uh, playing in goal for Nashville. Been one of the best goalies in the league uh, this season. And where did he go to high school? He went to Chaminade High. <laughs> <laughs> I had to, to ask, I'm a St. Louis native, yeah. and as much as I dislike that question, mm -hmm. when you play high school sports, it's what everyone wants to know. Yeah, and so he, he has had a long run in Major League Soccer, and has finally, in the past few years since he got to Nashville, has really developed into one of the league's premier goalies. So it's a, this is a start of a challenging stretch for City. The game, they will have more midweek games, midweek games that actually matter, mm -hmm. uh, as opposed to the Dallas or Open Cup games. Uh, and Nashville is, is the first of some challenges they'll be facing. So it's kind of a sprint, uh, kind of a grind, until they get to the League's Cup break uh, in August. And you were telling me during the podcast... Mm -hmm. What was the record that they have when they have a midweek game? When they have a midweek game, they're 0-2-1. Okay. Two losses and one tie the following Saturday. Uh, you know, I don't know statistically when that number becomes relevant, but so far, every chance they have had um, hasn't been one of their best efforts. Now, I would say the first, the two losses were not good games. Those right. were during the darker times, but this one was uh, brighter, but yeah, the finishing, the clinical finishing, just not there, and there were goals that could have changed things. Yes. Stroud's early goal, early opportunity that he didn't put in, or Vasilev's late uh, when he doesn't pass to Giochini, and, and he takes a shot. You know, if either of those score, it's a different game. And we would be having a very different conversation right now. This would be a very different conversation right now because you would do, there'd be very few negatives uh, to take out of that game. There might um, even be more cake. Uh, well, I should say that the cake has, Carter's farewell party was, was uh, on Friday. Was on Friday. <laughs> so um, it shows how the level of cleaning we do here around the office. But in any case, um, we talk about this more. We don't talk about cake. There is no, no. discussion of cake in the podcast, but there is uh, 45 or so minutes of, uh, of lively conversation about St. Louis City and what's going on and uh, what's next and where they're going. Yeah. And you get to find out more about Beth. Beth details her life story uh, the whole thing. On, on, on the podcast. So uh, going back to her early, early days. My so, very early days of grade school soccer. Yes. But in any case... Um, 
listen, subscribe to the podcast. If you're listening to the podcast, watching this already, listen to the podcast, subscribe to the podcast, wherever you find podcasts. Subscribe to the Post-Dispatch, wherever you subscribe to Post-Dispatches. And um, follow us for the uh, most complete and comprehensive uh, city soccer coverage uh, out there. Definitely. So until uh, next week, for Beth, for Gary Harrelson behind the camera, for Bob Cohen sitting on the side over here minding his own business, this is Tom Timmerman. Be Beth. seeing you. Oh, do I, do well, I say goodbye? You can say goodbye. Okay. Yeah. This is Beth O'Malley. <laughs> no, we're cutting this. <laughs> yeah, <that's my. laughs>